presentations that he did on ABC Plus Plus, he talks about this exact same problem and he tells and in talks about like how they envision ABC Plus Plus to solve it. So now, what happened inside of ABC Plus Plus? As you can see, like now, at every stage of the transaction, the state machine is getting or giving messages back to the application. And I'm, I'm transcribing this in like very simple terms, but like it's much more complicated than that. So at every stage, the state application engine is sending messages, receiving messages from the state machine and keep keeping state machine in the loop such that it ensures that, that the state machine also has the ability to like modify the transactions as and when needed. So let's talk about like these different functions for a minute and, and let, let's see what happens it, inside of these functions. Okay, so let's start with prepare proposal. Before that, just remember these functions, begin, begin block deliver TX and block and commit, uh, because we will have to refer them later on, so just remember these functions. Okay, so what happens inside of prepare proposal? Um, so the, when the proposal is ready, is getting ready, the state machine will tell the application that we're ready to create the proposal. So now at this point, the state machine has an option to maybe say, okay, we, here is our definition of the proposal, so like please check if this proposal is in this format, or like we would, we would want to like maybe um, prioritize one transaction over the other, so like, like you need to do that. So all of those things are like being done in the prepare proposal. The most important thing is like the sanity of transactions being checked here. And, and then in the process proposal, um, like the proposal is ready. It's given back to the application saying, okay, we have a pro proposal that's ready. Please check if it's like correct and we're ready to like publish, uh, we're ready to like give it to the, the consensus engine. Um, extend vote. Extend vote is, is, is one of the most fascinating things. So um, right before the consensus happens, right before like the validators start agreeing on the proposal, a final call is made to the application saying that do you want to like extend your vote? Do you want to add something to the to the um, voting part? And this gives the application an opportunity to like add something, um, and and thus this opens up like suite of applications like in oracles or like in, in other places where you need to like add a, a certain like thing that in the last minute that that can be. Um, that, that, that can be added to the consensus engine. And um, like how is that done? We'll see in the application because like th this might sound a bit dry, like how is this happening? But like, once we do the app walkthrough, it will be like much more clear like how is word extensions happening and how is it being um, checked, which is again in the next part, which is verify word extensions. Uh, so this is an opportunity for the application to verify that the votes coming in are like, are they correct? Are they according to how the application imagines the word to be. So that's being done inside of um, verify word extensions. And lastly, we have finalized block. So remember, like, in the beginning, I said, like, remember the, the three things, uh, begin block, end block, and um, deliver TX. All of that is um, collapsed into finalized block, where, like, we don't have, like, now three steps going. We just have, like, one finalized block where we, we say, okay, this is the transaction and now it's being finalized. Um, and lastly, commit is, is just like committing to the blockchain. So when I like, demonstrate the app, that will be like much more clear to you. Okay, so let's do um, a quick app demo so that like we can go through these functions and we can like understand like more clearly like how is how are these happening? Okay, actually, before we start the demonstration, I just want to like quickly tell you what the app is so that like your head, you're clear in your head. 
it's a very simple application where you can send messages and you can query the messages. Okay, so you so the the way the transaction will be structured is you will have a sender and then you will have a message like what's the message and what's the sender um, and through that we'll like demonstrate the different functions that we just saw like prepare proposal etc so um, so if you missed this link it is available on this particular repository you can like follow along if you want uh, but just a quick disclaimer this is temporary and will be available only for a few days the same app will be available on the official Comet BFT docs. So that's where you would find it like later on. But if you want to like still follow it right now or just like fork the code and just play around with it, you can like do it um, through this particular link. There are certain like pre-configurations required, like like um, you need to initialize the chain and all those kind of things. So that's all that's available on the Comet BFT website. So you can like follow along from there. Um, like for sake of time, I'm just going to like start the blockchain right uh, because I've already done all the configurations and everything. But it's it's very simple. You can just like follow along on on the web page. Okay, so as you can see, we have got our blockchain running, and the way we'll do it is like first I'll show you how the application is, um, how what what the application is doing and how it's running, and then we'll walk through the code and see like what exactly are those functions, prepare proposal, process proposal, doing in in the context of application. Is it sufficiently visible to everyone or should I make it bigger? Okay, so as I was saying, we have the transaction is in this format where we have a sender and a message. So let's say, um, since I'm a Harry Potter fan, I'm going to be using Harry Potter terminologies and terms. So let's say we have the sender with a Dumbledore and then um, the message is wand. Okay. Uh, what just happened is, if, if you can read, this was an invalid transaction format because I did not format the transaction correctly. The colon came on the end instead of in, after the message. So, okay, so the transaction did go through and we have a hash that's been created. So, the message was successfully sent. How do we know that? Let's query the message. I just realized I spelled Dumbledore wrong. Damn. <laughs> okay, but anyways, um, you can see that the message wand was created. So that was the demo. That was like what's happening. Let's go into the code. So <clears throat> the structure of the code is very simple. You have got, inside of ABC, I've got app.go. That has all the functions. That That's the most important part that you need to, you need to look at. And, and that's the part that we are going to like look into this demo. <clears throat> For all other things, like um, like how are the messages being processed, how are they adding to the database, like what is the moderator doing, all of those things are in different helper functions and like inside of model folder. So you can like 
if you want to tweak the application, you need to like modify those functions as well. But in our case, we just have to look at app.go. OK, so the very first thing that happened, OK, so the very first thing that happened, um, and by the way, like app.go has everything. So all the handshakes, all the like initialization of blockchain, everything is happening inside of app.go. And we, I would love to like go through these things as well. Like, but I think in the interest of time, we should focus on the, the important functions of ABCI. <clears throat> okay, so the very first thing that happened was the transaction went through CheckTX. Um, and what's the use of CheckTX? CheckTX, the very first function that it does is it checks the sanity of the transaction format. So it checks if the transaction was correctly formed or not. And um, with the Blender that I did, like where I put message later, uh, I mean, like the colon later, that was like an ill-formed transaction, which basically meant that the transaction was not in the correct format. So I got this error in while transaction format. Um, but that's not the only thing that CheckTX does. CheckTX also does a couple of other things. It also checks if the user was banned or not. How is the user getting banned? We'll come back to that in a minute. But it checks if the user is getting banned. And then it, um, it also checks if the user exists or not. So in this case, Dumbledore was not a part of the database. So it created Dumbledore in the, in the database and um, make sure to append the message. Make sure that the message could be appended to Dumbledore later. And, and then the transaction goes into prepare proposal. So let's ignore the first section of prepare proposal because it's, it deals with word extensions. And we'll come back to word extensions in a minute. Minute, but I just want to like go to the second end, where um, what happens is the transaction is now added to um, to this array where it can be uh, it can be like processed. So in, in this case, in this situation, they're just like being added to this. So in this case, they're just being checked if it's not banned and then like added to appended to the string. And inside of process proposal, two things happen. The very first thing that happens is um, it's being sorted. So what could have happened in prepare proposal is there could have been a transaction that could ban you, but you very carefully place the transaction just below the transaction that was like good. So what just happened with that? With with that transaction, um, you you could try and fool the the application. So in process proposal, we make sure that that doesn't happen, and uh, we first sort it. So now all of the transactions that are like are like the ones that could, could ban you are being placed on the top. So if that comes on the top, you're just banned outright. So all the other transactions below that, even if it's a good transaction, will not be considered. And then in finalized block, um, so like up till this point, all the transactions are good. And they're just like being added to, uh, they're just like being ready to add to the database. So they're just being added to the database, appended to the database. And in the final step, they are being committed. So in the final stage, they're just being um, written to the database, persisted to the database. OK, so now answering the questions, two questions, right, that we have in mind. What was like how would the user get banned a and b what is what extension that what is it doing so again like coming back to our demonstration we said that like in word extensions you could add data at the very last minute so what's happening is we have defined curse words that if a sender uses a particular curse word then that user should be banned and there are two parts to it. One is we can define curse words in the Genesis file. So we have a couple of curse words that we have already defined in the Genesis file. And the second thing is we can add new curse words. So what happens is like I cannot really show you how the, the words are added because like that would need um, more nodes. I'm just running on a single node. So I cannot really add. But um, what would happen is like you could add a new curse word. And then that curse word would be, should be such 
that it should be like at least two thirds of validators should have that same curse word in their um, in their word extensions. Only then it could be added to the list of curse words. So let's demonstrate that. So we have a sender Malfoy who is our villain and who is going to send the message muggle. And as a wizard, that's pretty offensive to use the word muggle. And we will ban Malfoy. So what really would happen is um, the transition wouldn't go through and the user would get banned. So the transition didn't go through. So what happened is coming back to prepare proposal. Remember I said like um, ignore the first part of prepare proposal for a minute. So here's what happens. Like now prepare proposal gets all the different curse words from the previous height. Mm -hmm. So if all the validators would have agreed on a particular word to be a curse word that would have been in, on the previous side, that, have, that would be included in the next height's um, prepared proposal. So it checks if the word coming in is a curse word. And if it's a curse word, it does the following. It blocks, uh, sorry, bans the user, puts the, use, um, puts the user in the banned users and like just cancel the transaction. So that just happened with us. Where the user got, sorry, yeah, where the user got banned. So if I try and send a message, which is not a curse message with the same user. So let's say I'm going to send magic. You could see that the user is banned. Why? Because once you do a transaction that's, that's, that's um, a banning transaction, you're no longer allowed in that. And if you remember, the, the three things that we were checking in check TX, this was one of it, right? The user is banned or not. And uh, in a prepare proposal, once we got the transaction with the banning message, we added him to the ban list. And then in the next transaction onwards, the check TX will just check it and outright reject the message. Yeah, so um, this is what's happening inside of um, word, word extensions. L like you can add the the word and then in verify word extension what we check is if the if the word is not being added more than once so why do we do that B basically it's just a simple way to demonstrate a verify word extension but in this case why we are doing it is because let's say um, there are five valid validators and if one validator says that magic is a curse word and four don't then of course, that will not be added to the list of curse words because it doesn't meet the quorum of two thirds. But what if a validator, being sly, just adds the same word five times? Then that would fool the application, where the application would think that, okay, five times a word is coming, that means like all the five validators agree to that particular word, which is incorrect, right? So. Um, in verify word extension, we make sure that the word is being added only once so that the value doesn't not try to cheat us. Okay, um, so yeah, that was, um, that was, I think, we covered like all of the different functions that we have in ABCI++. So, yeah, that, that's it. Um, thank you so much for like staying back. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and you are a quick like handles for Twitter and Telegram, etc. You can just reach out to us and talk to us. Thank you so much.